involved is I find that uh, it's better to let the temperature come to a relative room temperature it's a little more comfortable for the patient. Typically I'll instill two or three drops of anesthesia. It doesn't require a lot. All you want to do is have it comfortable enough that they don't squeeze hard, give you a little bit of expression. Typically I would wear sterile gloves for this since you're using it in a medical application, but since this man is completely healthy, we will assume that there's been... We have some, My predominant use is the slim. I occasionally will use an ultra if the disease state is really severe. This is in a preserved solution, so it's toxic to the cornea, relatively speaking. And it just burns, it doesn't hurt, it just burns. So you want to rinse it thoroughly and typically what I'll do is uh, go ahead and dispose of the residual. We're gonna bathe it in a saline bath, I'll cover it. I'll let that set for several minutes. I usually have other things going on when I'm doing this and uh, getting it prepped. I have a teaching program, so my externs and residents are usually involved, and it uh, gives us something to discuss while we're waiting. There we go. So typically, my use for this is infectious disease, non-healing epithelial defects, um, herpes, post-ulcer, patients with recurrent erosion, anything that involves wound management. This provides both an enhanced wound management profile as far as enhanced remodeling. Additionally, one of the elements that it sort of has as a secondary effect is it reduces the deposition of uh, corneal Cas chemical cascade MMP9 and collagenase, which produce scarring. So you'll see that when you use this versus letting the eye heal naturally, that you'll see less haze in the, in the corneal stroma, and you'll accelerate the healing process. We have a really large uh, cross-linking practice, probably the only one in the States bigger than us is Dr. Wackler down in uh, Hollywood. We've done about 5,000. My partner and I have probably done six, 700 myself. This is a really interesting tool for us because the nature of the delay in remodeling, we were simply tolerating. Now we have a standard protocol where this becomes the next step. And it really is just within days, the wounds heal. So it works well. The other reason I like this is that there are, there are dry products, which are membranes. Um, this allows you to treat the disease through the membrane placement. Quite frankly, the dry product doesn't tolerate that well because you have to put a contact lens on it to isolate it to the corneal surface. And the contact lens limits access to the wound site. So typically, that's not what I would use in a patient like that. So now that we've had a little discussion, this has had a chance to relax. There's an overlying cap, which is removed. Yeah. Yeah, no thanks. Oh, I thought these were artificial tears. No. I almost let it go. Want, do me a favor. I'm going to have you turn just a little bit to that's good. So I, I'm righty, so I tend to work from the patient's right side. Uh, I can place it from the opposite side, but I find it easier. Bite. So patients, this is the worst part of the procedure is the anesthesia. <laughs> yeah, it gives a little bite. It's getting so emotional. <laughs> let that settle for a couple minutes. I then remove the membrane and I'm going to re-rinse it. What I find is that rinse is useful. Second rinse is pretty critical because if any of the chemical is caught or trapped in the little margin at the ring, it'll persist and then it really does it just causes some irritation. Even with anesthesia, it can be unusual. 
And by the way, the dry membranes have the similar problem. There's a little bit of a bite if you don't place them properly. I use, uh, this is fine, but I typically make this an isolated, sterile procedure. So we have a just a Steripac drape that we bring out, place everything on there. And then I use a uh, OR 5cc saline. You can get them through any supply house, they're a couple of dollars, they're very inexpensive. But they're great because that means that one's used for that patient, then it's gone. This is great for here, but in an office, this may get touched, or somebody else may use it for a different purpose. They may touch an eyelid. So you want to avoid that. So I'm going to have him look down, and you're simply going to insert the rim up under the lid. Find the placement. Have him look up, straight ahead. Cut. It's all done. So the next step is to let him settle. And I usually give him not a long time. You know, I'm not going to leave the room and go do something else. I will then look at the slit lamp and I have this kind of tool, a little different than this, but this is nice too. And I'll take the blunt end of this, which is sterile, that I have a rounded edge on mine, and I'll use that to position the ring so it's perfectly centered. And depending on the patient and you know, patients with floppy lid, patients with lower 